Another part of the story that we've been trying to tell is that we believe these three uh, factors are impacting business, and business means job, and businesses mean opportunities for people. And uh, we've had uh, several of our group who have been involved with uh, looking at the business uh, impact. Ryan McWilliams is going to speak for that group and talk a little bit about some uh, real actual experiences and some data points from our community that support exactly what we've been talking about. Ryan? Thanks, Scott. Thank you all for coming out today. I uh, really appreciate your time and effort. Um, what we're doing today here is actually focusing on a brighter future. Uh, we're going to actually talk today about a few things that are, that are negative, but we're only doing that to get to the positive side of this. Um, I'm providing the business perspective today as a Pueblo native, a business owner, and a promoter of Pueblo. I'm attempting to improve our city as well as the future of our uh, uh, pro Pueblo group. As some of you may know, we're currently heading up a very large scale railroad industry uh, job, uh, sorry, uh, a renovation where we're also bringing in businesses from the railway community. What we're trying to do is we have a current MOU with five rail industry uh, companies. And they all want to come into Pueblo because they think it's a great place to expand. I'm addressing those challenges, though, on a daily basis these days with all of the issues we're creating as a community. Um, although we don't want to paint this picture of negativity, we do feel that we need to be aware of these issues as a community. I'm going to start with a recent email I received from one of the companies. This is from the president of that company. He says, good evening, Ryan. As you know, my company is proud to be working together with Black Iron Rail Car for the design, build, and manage of upcoming full-service rail car repair facility. This is expected to bring over 100 jobs to the city on the first shift alone. Over the last year and a half, we have been working hard on this goal, and we've had some surprising responses, such as, why Pueblo? We've also had responses such as, be sure to lock everything up. These comments come from individual Coloradans that apparently knew of Pueblo's past and challenges that we've had with drugs and crime. In all my visits to this point, I had not seen any of these items of concern, he continues. I had, in fact, seen the growth of new stores, restaurants, and businesses. That being said, I was recently in Colorado meeting with potential customers on a substantial multi-year project in Pueblo. I stayed at the hotel, we didn't list the hotel name for obvious reasons, downtown, and in the morning when loading up my rental car, I was shocked at what I saw in the daylight that I did not see the night before. I had parked in the back row along the fence behind the hotel, and in the grass in the parking spaces along the fence line were empty mini bottles of alcohol, and worse, syringes. In all my travels in nearly 20 years in the industry through a multitude of cities, large and small, I've never had to walk around syringes to get to my car. Needless to say, I was stunned, called the front desk staff, and to make them aware of the situation, which they were equally stunned. So here's the important part. So the challenges that he says he now faces as a result is, how do I tell potential employees that Pueblo is a safe place to bring their families, or for customers to bring their business. We certainly don't want to be considering other options for our location to base a facility at this stage, but in the process, I'm certainly looking for reassurance from the city of Pueblo that I will experience some better situation and others will not have this situation in the future. So, I'm here today with many others representing the business community, all of which have stored. Both of them have successes and failures. Um, all of which, all of these issues we're facing, we're able to address, but only if we bring out the best and our brightest. We need real solutions to the real problems. Some of those real problems are as follows. KR Swordsburger, for example, has a scenario whereby recent security expenses, due to many different factors, have now surpassed $100,000 in 2016 alone. These costs are in addition to their baseline expenses. ICM, Johnny's Boiler Shop, Cozleon & Cozleon, Corsentino Construction, Schistler Concrete, and many other labor-heavy companies 
are having a difficult time finding employees to accomplish the work that needs to be done because they have issues with a workforce that cannot pass a drug test. LDC recently had to install security cameras throughout the entire Thatcher building last year because vagrants were roaming through their properties and disrupting business. Schischler Concrete had an employee that was tested positive for marijuana after an incident, and still that employee received workman's comp benefits as well as unemployment when he was terminated for being under the influence of drugs. 303 Industries has had over a quarter of a million dollars in theft and vandalism in 2016 alone. Wells Fargo just recently had vagrants shooting heroin on the third floor of their only unlocked bathroom. I can go on, but you guys get the point. Everyone is aware that Pueblo, and frankly all of Colorado, is currently at a critical juncture. We should all be honored and humbled to be from a community so steeped in work ethic, industrial capabilities, and pride. Those things are what make community great and what separates the successful from the failed. 2017 has brought us more opportunities and more challenges than we've probably had ever in our history. This is why we're standing here today to ensure that we seize these opportunities and address the very complex challenges in an education, educated and successful manner. As a promoter of Pueblo and of Colorado, our group has wrestled with the consequences of bringing these issues to the forefront because we're worried what the rest of the world might say about Pueblo and how we're going to be viewed. I can speak for everyone in our group and state that we're terrified of the possible outcome. But we have determined that silence and apathy is not an option. So we're not here asking for anyone to complain further. We're here to state the problem. We're here for, so that the entire community knows they're not alone in their issues. What we are asking for is that you can start by calling your state representatives to request they institute more robust residency requirements or any form of social benefits. But you can also let your family, friends, and colleagues know that the handouts on the street are not helping anyone. We now need to roll up our sleeves to provide real solutions for which the group has quite a few here. Pressure our government officials and our community leaders into action. Bring about change in legislation and on the street action. Everyone needs to get involved personally and you should be asking yourselves, what are you doing today to make a better difference for Pueblo tomorrow? Thank you.